when it comes to changing the color all you got to do is this right very very simple however if you try to do it here because the skin tone matches with the color it just won't work it changes everything and also what if you want to turn it black or white and what if it is already white and there is no color to pick it doesn't change anything you see every situation demands a unique approach and in this video we have tried to cover all the possible situations in this ultimate guide to changing color in photoshop everything is time stamped quick and easy so without any further ado let's get started the first technique is for changing color to color this is where you already have a color that is not similar to the skin tone for it we're going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing hue saturation why hue saturation because that's what we are modifying hue and saturation now we need to target this color for it select the hand right here and single click on the color you can also choose blues from the drop down but using a hand it's more accurate that way now let us take the hue and saturation all the way to the right hand side to see which areas are being targeted right here we have sliders that tell us exactly which colors are being targeted it might not be perfect let's make the sliders narrow like this let's make it even more narrower and from the middle move it around to a place where everything is being affected and from there you can expand the range just like this this seems to be perfect now the two sliders at one end determine how smooth the transition is going to be between the areas that are targeted and the areas that are not so for example if right here it is like this as you can see it's very harsh as soon as we separate these two sliders the transitions become smoother similarly let's first of all expand it so that everything is covered and then you can make the transition smoother as well just like this similarly for the left hand side first of all let's expand it and increase this slider by the way once you end here it continues right here it's the whole thing it's like the guy who found out that the earth is round by sailing across it and reaching the same place now when the targeting is proper you can bring the saturation and hue back to its original position by double clicking on it just like this and then you can change it to your liking you can change it to whatever color you want you can change the saturation as well you can also change the lightness but we're going to get to that later important notification if you click elsewhere and then when you get back to hue saturation by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer everything seems to be gone but it is not it is inside of the blues remember so from the drop down choose blues to see the changes that you have made and then you can get back to it and do whatever change you want maybe i wanted this color a bit darker probably that's nice too by the way when it comes to targeting colors you can also use the eye dropper tools so right here if i use the hand to click on the blue of his shirt and then change the hue and the saturation all the way to the right hand side i can see that there are some areas not properly targeted for it we can work with these sliders just like we did before or use these eye droppers so let us use the plus one so that we can add to the target there you go just like that keep on adding keep on clicking you can also click and drag and draw around that's up to you and if by chance it selects some extra or unwanted colors you can use the minus eye dropper let us select that and let's say you don't want these colors so you can click on it click and subtract it in this case it is not working well since this color and this color are very similar so you can also use the eye droppers that's up to you moving on to the next method where the other parts of the image are very similar to the color that you're trying to change for example right here no matter how good we try to select the sweater by moving around making sure only the sweater is selected it's going to change the skin tones because the skin tones have red in it as well there you go it just will not work before we tackle this situation if you already don't have photoshop you can try it absolutely for free for 7 days i think check the link in description there might be some offers going on i try my best to keep it updated for this situation all you have to do is to create a mask you can create a mask after applying hue saturation or create a selection beforehand you can use the quick selection tool and just select the sweater i've already done it so i'm just going to load that by going to select load selection here it was sweater there you go not a great selection but it just works now with the selection active you can create a hue saturation adjustment layer just like so it will be created with that as a mask and then you can use the hand just as the previous method targeted change the hue and the saturation all the way to the right hand side you want to make sure you expand it nice just like that 
and it works perfectly. We can change the hue to whatever we want. We can change the saturation to whatever we want. And it just works. Purple sweater. Looks good. Barney. Now, what if you want to change a color to black or white? Here it is pretty easy. So I've targeted this color as you can see. Just using the previous method, don't miss anything. All we have to do is that instead of changing the hue, just decrease the saturation and slowly and gradually decrease the lightness. That's all. If you want it more black, there you go. If you want it white, there you go. By the way, if the lightness is all the way to the left or right, the saturation will automatically be zero. But sometimes we want just a little bit of it. For it, we might want to just decrease the saturation to minus 100. If you want that grayish color or if you want that off-white color, this is how to do it. But sometimes doing that may not be enough. For example, in this case, we have targeted the greens, as you can see, pretty good. But if we try to make it black by decreasing the lightness even all the way to the left hand side, it is not entirely black. It is grayish. So how do we make it black? Make a selection of the jacket like this. You can take your time to do it. I'm just going to go to select, load selection. I already have made the selection, a basic selection like that. With that selection active after hue saturation, you can create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon, choose curves. And from right here, it is easy peasy. Select the hand right here. You want this shine a bit more, click and drag it up slightly. You want these colors to be darker, click and drag it down just like that. And there you go, a black jacket. Similarly for white, let's turn it off for now. Go back to hue saturation and again, we need to get back to greens because that's where we made changes. And now increase the lightness like this. Again, it is gray, it is not white. Let's turn on the curves. Let's open up the properties of the curves by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer. If you don't see it, let's reset it. And all we have to do with the help of the hand right here, simply brighten it just like so. Done. You can even brighten it more up to you. You can make those changes. And if you choose to brighten it more, and if you don't like the highlights as much, you can slightly take it down. Everything is up to you. Now, sometimes it can also happen that the changes can be way too much when you're trying to change it to black or white. For example, in this case, if we take the lightness all the way to the left hand side, it is too black and some areas lose the details. So how do we take care of that? Simple, decrease the saturation all the way to minus 100 and keep the lightness not so much on the left. Bring it back right up, just like that. Just like having a bit dark gray sweater because that's what exactly it would look like. So that's how you take care of that. Before we move on to the next method, I have a big announcement and a reminder that we're gonna do a two day, full day Photoshop workshop in beautiful Colorado Springs, hands on, in person, and we're gonna have loads of fun. It's gonna be happening in the beautiful ENT Center for the Arts on May 18th and 19th, and I really hope to see you in person. On day one, we will learn everything we need to know to get up and running with Photoshop so that it never looks intimidating to you and you can start using it in your professional workflows. On day two, we're gonna cover and go in depth into advanced techniques of compositing, retouching and color grading. This is where you make your photos stand out. Please check the link in description for the passes and I really hope you can make it. Moving on to the next technique, how do you change the color when it is white? For it, we cannot create a hue saturation adjustment layer because there is nothing we can target. So instead, first we need to make a selection of the thing that we need to change the color of. For it, select the quick selection tool and you can make a selection of this. Photoshop does a pretty darn amazing job. This is just a basic selection. On top of it, we're gonna create a solid color adjustment layer, just like so. And you can pick whatever color you want. Not black, we're gonna get to that later. For right now, let us choose something like neon. That's fine, and there you go. The color is changed. Fantastic, isn't it? Just kidding. Now you need to change the blend mode. Now keep in mind, it is already white. Whatever color changing we do, it will only darken it. So what is the blend mode that darkens with beautiful gradients and it's absolutely amazing? And that is multiply. So change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And there you go, color changed. However, in areas like this, it is not looking perfect, even right around the hair. For it, we need to go to the mask, select the brush, select a soft round brush with white as the foreground color, just paint slightly on the inside as well. I would decrease the flow to about maybe 10 or 20 and paint a bit on the inside because a little bit of the green will spill in. Similarly, we can do the same right here as well. Just for a little bit of the spill, you wanna make sure that the mask is selected just like that. And then you can increase the flow 
and slowly and gradually paint over here. Not a big deal. Similarly here as well. Be careful with the hair. If you paint extra, you can press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and now it is black. So you can paint back in some hair color and you can decrease the flow and kind of take your time with it. And this is how you change the color when it is white. And the best part is everything I'm telling you is non-destructive. So you can always go back and change the colors. Double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer and you can change it to whatever you like. Maybe we're going to go with blue, this color. I don't know what color is this. Let's go with this. Fantastic. But if you do want a darker color, that brings us to the next technique. When you want to change white to black or any other darker color, it is not as easy as that. It rhymed, by the way, because there's a drastic change not only in color, but also in terms of brightness levels. And if you don't have a perfect selection, you will see the problems through. So with the quick selection tool, we can make a basic selection for now and then we can refine the mask. There's a detailed video about it, which you can watch right here. But for right now, let us load up a basic selection. This is what I did in like three seconds. And with the selection active, we are changing the brightness levels first. For it, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves instead, our favorite thing in Photoshop, and then take the rightmost point and take it down just like it but the contrast is gone so create a point right here and take that down as well it's getting to where we want it to be and just like that you change it to black but if you zoom in you can see the faults have a look around the edges the selection is not proper so for it you need to take your time with it you can use the pen tool or you can take the brush work your way through this you need to be very precise around the edge and this is not going to be an easy task but this is how you change it. Now, if you want to add some shine on top of it, you can create a curves adjustment layer on top of it and maybe add some shine like this. And we only want the shine in the bright areas. So for it, double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Focus on the shirt, nowhere else. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break it apart and make the transition smoother. Like this, this is fine. And that way you can add a little bit of shine, but it's applying elsewhere. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers so that it is limited just to this area. There you go, a bit of shine. And if you want a darker color, that is also possible by simply creating a hue saturation adjustment layer. And again, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers or click on this button, does the same thing. And you wanna check color wise, and now you can pick whatever color you want. You can change the saturation from right here. And this is how you get a darker color. And of course, you can change the darkness of that color by changing the curves. Similarly, if you want to turn black to white, here's how you do it. Select the vest. I've already made that selection. With the selection active, similarly, we're going to create a curves adjustment layer, just like so, and make it brighter. Take the point on the right to the left like this. And at this point, it's perfect. If we go further, we lose details, so we need to be careful about it. Just like this, it's fine. Maybe we can create a point in the middle and take it up as well. But the dark areas are getting too dark for it. We can create one more curves adjustment layer and take it up just like this. And we want to limit it just to this area. So how do we do it? Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers or click on this button so that it is limited. Now we only wanted it in the dark areas. So for it, double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the right areas like this. Now this is harsh. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, take it apart like this. There you go. This looks nice and hit OK. And that's how you turn black to white. Now, what if you want to turn black to a particular color? Just continue right here and create a solid color adjustment layer. Let us choose red, hit OK. And again, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click between these two lines and change the blend mode to multiply. And that's how you do it. But I believe that the highlights have a lot of reds. So you can also create a gradient map instead. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map and also limit it by clicking on this button. And then you can change the gradient, single click right here. For the highlights, we want less saturated red like this. And for the darker areas, we want this kind of red. Hit OK. 
hit OK again and change the blend mode again to multiply. And now you can modify how the highlights are colored, how the shadows are colored. You can have different colors right here. Oh, this looks nice. There you go. That looks way better than before. Let's keep it this way and you can anytime modify whatever you want. So that is the whole thing about changing colors from anything to anything. Do keep in mind, different situations ask for different unique approaches and you can find them in this video. Please refer to these timestamps. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here.